Welcome, my dear students, to this last of my lecture series on Chapter 7's coverage of periodic trends, that is, periodic properties of the elements. In this video, I will introduce you to electron affinity and some explanation of the differences between metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. So, as we learned in our previous video, linked to in the description below or floating as a link over my head possibly, an atom's first ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove one electron from it, thereby forming a cation. That is a positively charged atom. For example, the first ionization energy of solid carbon atoms is summarized in this chemical equation. You can see here that the positive delta E means that energy must be put into this system in order to extract an electron as a product away from a neutral carbon atom and thereby form a carbocation. This process then is endothermic. Now, most atoms can also gain electrons to become anions. The energy change of adding an electron to an atom, as opposed to taking one away, is called that atom's electron affinity. For most elements, energy is actually given off when an electron is added. For example, adding an electron to a sulfur atom gives off energy as summarized in this chemical equation. The negative delta E here means that energy is given off or expelled to the surroundings during this process. Thus, this process is exothermic. Now, generally speaking, the more badly an element wants electrons, the more negative or energetically favorable its electron affinity will be. We'll now leave this subject and move on to discussing the general differences between metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Now, as a quick reminder, this periodic table is colorized to show you which elements are metals, which ones are nonmetals, and which ones are metalloids. As you can see, most of the elements are metals. The nonmetals are the red colorized ones up here, as well as hydrogen, and the metalloids are a very small number of elements that traverse the two. So what properties do metals have? Well, metals are shiny, malleable, and ductile. Ductile means they can be drawn into wire, and they conduct heat and electricity. Elements show increasing metallic character as you go down and to the left on the periodic table. So we get more and more metallic as we go further down and left. Furthermore, metals have low first ionization energies. That is, they easily, relatively speaking, lose electrons to become cations, positively charged atoms. This means that metals like to be oxidized. That is, they like to lose electrons. Now, transition metals, which are the ones in the D block, which is this region right here, can often form ions with different charges. For example, neutral iron can exist as iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus. Additionally, when metals and nonmetals bond to each other, they generally form ionic compounds in which the metals lose electrons and give them more or less fully to the nonmetals and the nonmetals take them. Thus, we end up with cations and anions associating ionically with each other. Moreover, most metal oxides happen to be basic. That is, they react with water to form hydroxides, like the example right here. And that will come into play later on. So those are the properties of metals. Now, what of nonmetals? Well, nonmetals can be solid, liquid, or gas. They're not lustrous or shiny and are generally poor conductors of heat and electricity. Now, when nonmetals bond with each other, they form molecular compounds. Also, because they have larger negative electron affinities, that is, they energetically favorably want electrons, nonmetals tend to gain electrons when they react with metals. And most nonmetal oxides are acidic, which means that they react with water to form acids like this. And this acid right here is a weak acid called carbonic acid. We end then with metalloids. So metalloids, of course, which are this small sliver of elements shown right here in green, have properties that are in between those of metals and nonmetals. For example, silicon looks shiny like a metal, but it is not malleable. So it can't be pounded into a plate or drawn into wire. It actually kind of crumbles more like a nonmetal. And according to our text, several metals, such as silicon, are electrical semiconductors. That is, they are half conductors. They aren't superconductive or super non-conductive. They're somewhere in the middle. And are the principal elements used in integrated circuits and computer chips. One of the reasons metalloids can be used for integrated circuits is that their electrical conductivity is somewhere in the middle that is intermediate between that of metals and nonmetals. Very pure silicon is an electrical insulator. That means that it doesn't conduct electricity at all but its conductivity can be dramatically increased with the addition of specific impurities called dopants. This modification provides a mechanism for controlling electrical conductivity. So that ends our coverage of metals, metalloids, and metal and non metally metals. Metal really do. So that ends this video's coverage of metals, non-metals, and metalloids. Thank you for joining me on this wondrous journey. In other words, thanks for watching. Please have an enjoyable rest of your day.